Please? Please? Have you seen my scooter? No. Welcome to Scrap Heap Challenge, the show that demands two teams mix brains with brawn to fabricate the outrageous from just this. Scrap! And this week's mechanical migraine promises to be a Scrap Heap classic. Our teams must throw a 100 kilo object as far as they can without using compressed gas or gunpowder. And the weighty payload in question is a scrap heap staple, the humble scooter. Man has been attempting to fling heavy objects since time began. Ancient Greek siege engines were used to circumvent city walls, and diseased corpses were a medieval form of bio-warfare. But as far as we know, there's no historical record of scooters being slung. So who will be taking on this unique challenge? Popping in this week is a tinkering trio of hot air balloonists from the Wirral. Launching a scooter should be a walk in the park for these high-flying Liverpudlians. Blowing all the hot air and keeping a watchful eye is Captain Seymour, while sweating it out on the heat will be Kenty and his fellow scavenger, Fingers. Calm down! It's the Balloonatics. Aiming to puncture those balloonists' hopes are a team of aquarium constructors from Dorset who enjoy getting tanked up for a living. Fish tanks, that is. At the helm is plumbing expert Charlotte, a.k.a. Lottie, while sifting through the sea of scrap falls to Wally and Nutty. Look, Shark! It's the aquarium crew! Welcome, teams. I hope you're ready to throw caution and a great deal more to the wind, as we are challenging you to build monster machines capable of throwing 100 kilogram four-stroke kings like this. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> but before you explode into action, be warned. You can't use compressed gas or gunpowder. If that wasn't enough, you have just 10 hours to construct these all-powerful scooter shooters. So, all hands to the throttle on the sound of the gong. OK, team, wait for the gong, wait for the gong. Go! So you want that, boys? That's <laughs> not bad. Not a bad task. Shooting scooters. Without explosives. Without compressed air. So we've got to fling it. A long track. Mm. With a cable. The front ear can be raised. If it were for Julius Caesar's, why can't it work for us? Have a, we have a pivot here, yeah. And then we get a car and we drive it really fast <laughs> into that. <laughs> Bang! And that goes. Poof. That would go miles, wouldn't it? You've got to be able to do it three times, though. Get three cars. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, to ensure our teams don't get too carried away, we've enlisted the help of two experts. Keeping the balloonatics on the right flight path is a scrap heap veteran. He's appeared three times on Scrap Heap Challenge, and each time involving the mystical art of weaponry. As a munitions specialist, he loves anything packing a magnificent amount of muscle. He's Todd Todashini. Hi, guys. I'm Todd. Todd. So you know what it is? <laughs> yeah. Exciting. <laughs> and? Exciting. At the moment, we're sort of leaning towards a simple A-frame, just work out the weight, the measurements and what have you. Sort of trebuchet type of thing. Trebuchet, yeah. that's the word. Right. On the history of Scrap Heap Challenge, not one has ever worked. What does work and has worked well are crossbows. Ooh. Now, <laughs> if you imagine a normal crossbow, you've got a bow up here and you've got the stock down here. For that, you need a whopping big spring. Now, you're not going to find springs that big. So, we can do something a bit like that. A string between the two tips of the arms. Made of what material? What are you thinking? It's got to be a steel cable or something like that. If we then attach some springs... What, we're talking suspension springs? Suspension springs. Uh, bigger than that, I think we want lorry ones. Expert Todd is proposing an unconventional crossbow. They aim to build a strong frame, attach two powerful rams capable of compressing two huge lorry leaf springs, which will tighten a steel cable. It'll certainly have the muscle, but will the machine be beefy enough to take all those stresses and strains? I would love test shoot this at the end of the day. Yeah, we'll go with that. Joining the aquarium crew is another scrappy old hand. He appeared on the first ever series, and ten years on, he hasn't changed a bit. 
a pyrotechnic coordinator who'll ignite any idea requiring a colossal force, he's Don Mansfield. Hi. Hi. I'm your expert for the day. What are you looking at doing? Well, okay. we've got a chain flinger. Or some volunteer driving a car off a cliff yeah. plate, it looks yeah. like. Does yeah, it that was favorite? you. No, oh, I thought it might, but yeah, yeah, on the third <laughs> attempt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From my point of view, a trebuchet-based concept is, is the thing we're looking at. Right. right, OK. The problem we have is that what we're lobbing, scooter, is actually quite heavy. So if we're going to do something like that, we'd be really, really up against it, getting the weight heavy enough. I could sit in it. <laughs> what I'm going to suggest is that we do a modern angle on an old idea. OK. Right. Rather than trying to sling it over the top, we're actually going to just use the weight to not throw it, but launch it. Turning 2,000 years of history on its head, the aquarium crew aim to construct an underarm trebuchet. They plan to build two tall A-frames, find a large steel container to fill with heavy ballast and attach an arm. But get their calculations wrong. And which way will it go? Nobody knows. We're using the trebuchet idea, yeah. but we're just bringing it up to date. Underarm fling. An underarm trebuchet. Yeah. Yeah. It's a girly throw. <laughs> Before our scavengers can go anywhere, they'll need a shopping list of scrap. First on my critical list, I want stuff for the arms. Cross pieces. A couple of leaf springs, yeah. We need something with bearings. Things like a car axle. So you right need then. to get out there and get hunting. Right. Go get it now. Cross Off bearings. you go. Oh. So with our challenge underway, both sets of scavengers will be desperate to get their hands on some prize scrap. Who'll be shooting from the hip and who'll be shooting in the dark? We'll find out after the break. Welcome back to Scrap Heap Challenge, where our two teams have been given the task of throwing 100 kilogram scooters. As our teams are banned from using compressed gas or any kind of gunpowder, each team has had to dip into their history books. The aquarium crew, along with expert Don Mansfield, has opted for an ancient Greek approach. They want to build an underarm trebuchet using a whopping great counterweight. While the balloonatics and their expert Todd are adapting a medieval idea. They aim to build a huge crossbow using leaf springs compressed by two powerful rams. With less than 10 hours to build monster mechanical scooter shooters, each team is on the heap in search of vital scrap. See the big frames on there? The what? See the big frames of the arms. Right, let's See get it. around it then. And it's those hot air balloonists from the Wirral who lay claim to the first find. Just stand it up so it doesn't go past. What are you doing with it now? Kentian fingers are hoping to save a lot of fabrication time by using these old heavy scaffold supports as the arms to their huge crossbow. I'm out of breath. It's a run yeah. that dummy in. Yeah, you there, Stu? Yeah, go ahead, Pete. Yeah, Stu, we found some what look like 15, maybe 16 foot A-frames. They're made up of two inch, maybe three inch diameter bar. Too heavy. Yeah, uh, experts confirm it. It's, it's going to be too heavy for us. It's a letdown for these scouse scavengers. But it'll take a lot more than that to deflate these boys. In one. Oh, banana six. Now, the idea with Scrap Heap Challenge is you collect scrap and take it to the well, we, 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 We've had a quick word and they don't want what we've got for them. Really? What's Bit the matter? Too heavy. Too heavy. Do you want to hold it? Yeah. I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, talk me through your design. Loosely speaking, it's a crossbow. Right, so you're going to need really robust stuff, aren't you? Because we put it under pressure. There's one yeah. hell of a pressure. Well, apparently what we want to do is when we built it, we're frightened of it, it might work. If we're not frightened of it, it's not going to do the job. <laughs> uh, we do like a bit of stress in, in the scrap and in the, in the contestants. Brilliant. And why do you think this is going to be too heavy? Well, this is a possibly be a part of the arms. Oh, right. But if you're instant. going to be moving a lot of weight... We yeah. don't want to be using all, all our energy up on moving Just to move the, 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 the structure. We want to use it to chuck the scooter. We can build it much lighter. I mean, that's a pretty thick wall. And oh, anyway. I've just lifted it. So it's back to square one for the balloonatics. We're going to go back and get that other stuff, because yeah. they've got a lot to do at the moment. Ow! Meanwhile, on the other side of the heap... That's a weight. That is, isn't it? We could roll that back and say... What do you reckon to this? Get your laughing gear around that. The aquarium crew have spotted a heavy steel tube, an ideal counterweight, if, of course, they can get it out. That is hell of a weight, mate. <laughs> we'll give it to them for an option, don't we? Sure. Yeah. You can always bring it back. 
Oh, I reckon if you could get enough steel you in there. You could fill that. Okay. Cement mixer would be handy. You would just fill it full of cement. <laughs> Even though that steel tube is safely back at base, Captain and Expert have nothing to do. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, my lover. <laughs> right, lover. <laughs> um, we found a big, a big like, trailer. Do you think it's worth bringing in? Yeah, we reckon, yeah. It's got an axle on it as well. Brilliant. Bring it in, then. Do you want to have, just have cool. a quick feel of this down here, Paul? Because we, me and you might yeah. be able to pull it yeah. up and over. <laughs> Scavengers Wally and Nutty think the axle to this old agricultural trailer could be sturdy enough to support their heavy counterweight. We'll lift that up over there. <laughs> so as the aquarium crew move into second gear, all is quiet in the Balloonatics build bay. Um... Zero scrap and nothing to do is taking its toll on expert Todd. What the hell were we talking about? We talking about a new idea for the beam, or the, the arm. We were, we were, we were going to lay out on the floor, we were going to mark out, and he said, no, I've got another brighter idea. And it's not just Todd who's drawing a blank. I'm trying to find some for the pins. I'll see wood for the trees that run. With time ticking away, Kentian fingers really need to get a move on, or the Balloonatics build will never get off the ground. Right, so we've got some steel. We need more steel, John, don't we? Yeah, we need some a lot plate. Of steel. I think we need to have a look down here, mate. Yeah. By contrast, the aquarium crew are having no problems locating vital scrap. We've got a, bit, a good bit of an angle around there. Yeah. Or was that, was that a sea set? What do you call that? No, that's channel. That's fine, channel. yeah. So you could use that. Do you know, I'm sure the aquarium crew were just going around the whole heap and earmarking pieces of scrap they want. Oh, we could do some more of them. We'll have them. They're rushing around the heap, sort of going, yeah, we're like that and that and that. And there's nothing in the, there's nothing in the build here at all. I feel useless. Hello. So, Captain and Expert. <laughs> Drinking tea? Well, they're having tea. It's nice. They can have a little chat and, you know, get to know each other, which is good. And that's part of team morale. It but is. They probably but... do need some metal. <sighs> Blissfully unaware of Charlotte's growing impatience, oh, Nutty and Wally think these familiar-looking <laughs> scaffold supports could be perfect for their underarm trebuchet. Good find. That's, yeah, spot on, mate. Sorry, we've got the A-frame part. OK, so where's that trailer? The trailer's out in the yard. Uh, we've <laughs> just got a bit knackered pushing about, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> OK, so basically you've got loads of stuff. It's all going to be coming back soon. Yeah, we've got that. We've got loads. Dom's going to be over the moon. He's going to give you a big kiss. Brilliant. Great. See you soon, then. I'm having deja vu. I'm sure I said to see you soon about an hour ago. Your scavenging boys are not being super fast at the moment. With none of the Balloonatic's key components and absolutely nothing back in the build area, their giant crossbow is still pie in the sky. Well done, John. Very nice. Lovely. How much of that do you want? As much as possible or...? Much as possible, and then we can really get cracking. Having only a trailer full of metal to play with, it falls to expert Todd to use his imagination. Well, that is a potential pivot pin. As so often happens on the heap, we see an old rusty pipe, but Todd's expert eye sees possibilities. Looking good. I think that'll do it, you know. It's a start, but until the scavengers find the leaf springs and rams central to their design, nice. there's only a certain amount the captain and expert can do. Wouldn't it be easier if someone sat on the other end? For me? Yeah. Having earmarked most of the scrap on the heap, the aquarium crew's two scavengers finally get the idea and take some of it back. Yeah. They give us a quad. <laughs> yeah. Ah, can we go through there? Can oh, you go straight on here? Yeah. Come yeah. on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's not one light bit about this, yeah. When you said trailer, I was worried yeah. Yeah. that the hubs may not be man enough for the job, we but thinking. these are. Do you reckon, yeah. it, reckon it's up for it? Well, we these, thought that. We haven't denied for a certainly while. Certainly these have got... I mean, this is like one of these heavy-duty industrial-type tyres, so... Yeah. You know. The aquarium crew plan to amputate the wheel hubs from this old agricultural trailer. They'll position them on top of two identical A-frames to form a pivot, which should ensure a smooth swinging motion. Mind your back. So the aquarium crew's build area sparks into life. Right, you want the other one, please? Please. While expert Don operates on the wheel hubs, Captain Charlotte begins stripping out the wheel rims, 
which they'll use as a template to attach their trebuchet arm. Meanwhile, it looks as though Scavenger's Nutty and Wally's earlier earmarking is paying off. Beautiful. That's got to have quite a lot of trouble on that one, hasn't it? Yeah, it's also the powerful one because yeah. that's the one that compresses the stuff oh, in. It's, only... it's been slow going all morning for the balloonatics, but have they uncovered scrap heap pay dirt? We'll have to salvage the pipework right up to that dune in there. These rams, used to crush all our household waste, could provide the muscle to compress the leaf springs on their huge crossbow design. As the leaf springs become straight, so the cable gets tight. Once the rams reach their capacity, the machine is ready to fire. With the scavenge well underway, it's time to meet the man who'll be keeping a watchful eye on our two teams. This week's judge is the keeper of the most powerful medieval trebuchet in the world. What he hasn't launched, chucked or hurled really isn't worth knowing about. It's Warwick Castle's master of trebuchet and a man who'll guarantee to keep our teams stuck to the task in hand. It's Nick Glue. Morning, Nick. Welcome aboard. Morning. Nice to see you. So, Nick, what are the absolute key ingredients then that both teams need to have to be able to throw a 100 kilogram scooter? Generally, it's all about timing. Uh, it's when they time that release to get the perfect shot. Well, the, the aquarium crew are building a trebuchet. Yeah, it's a, it's a trebuchet, but it's, it's basically upside down, uh, which is an interesting idea on right. an old principle, but it should work. Uh, do you think it's, it has the potential? It's got the potential. Right. Both machines, I think, the aquarium crew have got the edge, Right, basically. Oh, really? Machine. You think so? I mean, they've certainly got the edge at the moment in terms of components. The boys saw a winch, and the winch looked good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also got the biggest potential for going drastically wrong. Yes. I think. Uh, with the underarm swing, it's got a, a very high chance of throwing it a good distance, but directly up, up, up in the air yeah. rather than forwards. Yeah. But then what the balloonatics are going for, uh, I mean, it's, the nearest way of explaining it is, is like a bow and arrow, but not quite. Yeah, isn't a it? giant crossbow, basically. Yeah. It's whether or not they can, it's going to have a massive amount of force behind it. It's whether or not they can transfer that force into throwing the bike and yeah. instead of just twanging the string, basically. Yes. And they haven't got a great deal of material to... They don't seem to be uh, working that quickly. One. So, but it sounds like at the moment your money would be on the aquarium crew, am I, am I, I right? I have to say, yeah, and owing to the fact that, you know, I work with trebuchets, that's got to be my favourite. Right, yeah. Definitely. Even though it's one that's never, ever been built before. If, yeah. <laughs> ah, you whoa, stop! Whoa, whoa. Let's see what's in there, then. Expert Todd may seem overly enthusiastic about this hydraulic pump, but he knows beggars can't be choosers. OK. Right, Seymour, we're yep. just about... I'm just going to check that the, uh, the pump's in here. This one looks good, actually. It's free to move. Looks good, looks clean, so um, let's go with that. It looks as though the hydraulic pump is a good one, but without those rams, it'll be as useful as a chocolate teapot. Right. Shall we make something? Absolutely, let's do it. Right. With no sign of the rams or the essential leaf springs, expert Todd is forced into taking a gamble and begins to weld together the arms for their giant crossbow. The arms of the huge catapult will be tensioned by a pair of powerful leaf springs, compressed by two hydraulic rams. But with no idea of the size of the springs, the design of the arms is pure guesswork. Small springs can't shift heavy arms. But too large a spring could snap them. And I, looking at them, I don't know how they're going to come off, to be honest, because you can't knock the pins out because all the metal's... But all place. that could be academic. Kenty and Fingers are taking forever getting those rams out, and the leaf springs are a fantasy. <laughs> give it a great big yank, Josh. Yeah. It's always good to give it a good yank, isn't it? It is. And if that wasn't bad enough, those hoarding heroes, the aquarium crew, are really getting stuck in. You got it, you got it. You got it, go on, mate. It. After a final delicate touch from Nutty, the last of their four scaffold supports is free. <laughs> Excellent. So with everything they need back in their build area, all four team members can get cracking. And it's just as well. Uh, teams, this is your six-hour time check. You have six hours of build time remaining, teams. Thank you. I think we just get older, don't you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
having a build bay bulging with bits means those fish tank constructors from Weymouth are swimming away with the early lead. But can the hot air balloonists from the Wirral pick up the pace and rise above their opponents? Find out after. Welcome back to Scrap Heap Challenge, where our two teams have decided to go back in time. They're building medieval siege engines capable of throwing a very modern day payload. The scooter. But the question is, who will win the monumental battle of the builds? Weymouth fish tank builders The Aquarium Crew, along with their expert Don Mansfield, have the early lead, building an underarm trebuchet using a whopping two-ton counterweight. Can I try and fit it once? After a successful scavenge, all of their components are safely back in the build area. And it's all hands to the pump. One, Ready? two, three, go! Hut, 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 hut. Meanwhile, Liverpudlian hot air balloonists, the Balloonatics, and their expert, Todd, are constructing a giant crossbow using two powerful rams to compress a pair of large leaf springs. For these boys, it's been hard work on the heap. They finally liberated their giant rams, but are still missing a vital component. Yeah, just give us an ETA on the actual springs themselves. This old truck axle has some potential leaf springs, but until they get them out and back to the build area, it's anyone's guess as to whether they'll do the job. With no time to spare, expert Todd and Captain Seymour are ploughing on regardless. Hang on. Can we measure across the bottom? The aquarium crew are making great progress building the first of their two huge A-frames. Now, can you do this again? Because I'm going to send yeah, it that way. And spirits are high. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the feminine welder. <laughs> we have. Oh, he is in touch with his feminine he side. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> it's not all fun and games, though. The team know both A-frames must be identical. And that's definitely, you're right. That's, that's fairly right. important, that bit, isn't it? Because yeah. it needs to be... Yeah, 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 because if, if you're swinging it at a true, yeah. it's going to start buckling things, isn't it? What have we got? Some springs on it, and I found a cable as well. They're looking very nice. OK. After experiencing a turbulent morning, could it be clear skies ahead for the balloonatics? Oh, they're a bit scary when you look at them in real life, aren't they? Very. It looks as though the old truck leaf springs are just the job for their huge crossbow. Well, they're too big. No, we need it all. They're just big. I just don't want to send the boys back out there again. No, 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 no. Finally, the Balloonatics build can get underway. But with nothing resembling a siege engine in any build area, we've asked our judge to shed some light on the team's designs. I'm really impressed with the models. I mean, particularly the aquarium crew's one. I, I knew what the idea was, but and I'd seen the drawings, but I, I couldn't quite picture it. This really does explain yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. A couple of little models really show how they work. Um, this one is basically the aquarium crew's design. Yeah. It's designed to throw big items, so it's, it's ideal for this job. But there are a couple of like, little problems with it. So that's the scooter oh, at the back This there. is a scooter at the back. You've got, now got the weight in the air, yeah. and it's all about the timing of the release of the scooter. Oh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, went, it went a distance, but the wrong way. <laughs> the wrong um, way. <laughs> they could always take the first shot, and then if it all, all goes badly, just turn it around. Yes. Um, the next one, though, is the Blunatix. Right. Crew. What they're relying on is not a counterweight, they're actually relying on a, a torsion, or tension rather, from these. Uh, what these will be is basically leaf springs. But um, the problem uh, that I can see happening is possibly as you bend this back, the arms aren't going to take that amount of force and they're just going to fold in. Yeah. Then also, it's also again how they, the string catches the bike. But as you right. see, it's Things, flipping. It, yeah, that the flipped up the then, didn't it? Yeah. Um, and that's basically uh, interfering with it getting a nice free run. Yes. If this does work though, it's going to be a fantastic piece of engineering, it has to be said. Right. So our judge is clearly impressed with the Balloonatix design. But it'll be a long time before their machine resembles his model. Fortunately, they've got their noses to the grindstone. OK. Job's good. OK. 4.8. 4.9. Right. Next door, the oh sheer God. enormity of the aquarium crew's build is causing some serious head scratching. That's five metres there. But that far out on the other. 4870. It's not too dreadful, is it? 13 mil. Sorry, 13 centimetres. This A-frame will be just one side of their underarm trebuchet, but scavenger Nutty has concerns. But the angle needs to be set, because these are twisted all over the place. I reckon these will twist enough to take that out, you know. They'll just have to hope their calculations measure up when it comes to fixing the machine together. 
Uh, teams, just to keep you in the loop, you have four hours remaining. Four hours build time remaining today. Thank you. We're definitely coming back tomorrow. Oh, trying to give us art. <laughs> With those huge leaf springs to work around, constructing the framework for the Balloonatic's giant crossbow is a relatively simple matter. And it's not long before it starts to take shape. If I grab the bottom end down there, can yeah. you three just sort of shuffle this forward just so we can get that back bar in? Yeah, OK, so we're coming this way, a foot. The job it is. Yeah. yeah. Are you good? That's it. Just so you know, guys, I think you're doing real well. We're getting some good stuff together here, and it's, it's coming on quickly now. Yeah. You know what we're doing, don't you? By contrast, in the aquarium cruise build area, progress is slow. Do you want to knock the arm together, then? Because the arm's What's the... really important. No. No. The arm is half an hour, tops. You reckon? Once we work out the measurements, honestly. We can work out the measurements, though, can't we? We've That's got what I'm saying now. It. It's four and a half drop, and I think we need to possibly allow 400 mil. OK. A traditional trebuchet has a long throwing arm and a shorter weight arm, the ideal ratio being four to one. Expert Don is proposing a three to one ratio meaning less power, but critically less weight stressing their machine. That is, of course, if expert Don can get his sums right. We're doing a 4.3 arm, 4.4 arm. I'm trying to think of something that's divisible easily by three. Nine. Thank you. What? Uh, 4.5. <laughs> yeah, which is a bit too eight. long. So if we make this 1.3, 1.4... 1.4... 1.4 would be 4 3 metres, 4.2, wouldn't it? 1.4. What's 1.4? Right, that's cleared that up then. But the Balloonatics aren't suffering any confusion and have now caught up with their opponents. Ah, room to breathe. OK, let's just pop one on and see what it looks like. Oh, this is where we definitely want to see, Morris. <laughs> so what we're going to do anyway is we'll put some stops yeah. a little bit way up that. Yeah. The other thing it means is that we can put some, some great big reinforcement down here. Their huge catapult is a complicated build. Fortunately, expert Todd has all the answers. Yeah. The cable height's going to be about six inches here, which feels, feels all right to yeah. me. How long's the cable going to be between the two? Six odd metres. Six odd metres. So where's this going to be in its normal in position? At rest position, pretty much that. And then it gets gradually tensed up by the hydraulic rams? Yes. Outside the aquarium cruise build area, Wally is putting the finishing touches to their second day frame. Right, I reckon that's going to be lovely, that. Inside the build area, Captain Charlotte and Nutty are still working on the counterweight. Where do you want the brace cross? Inside? Uh, above, I would think. Above. Is, this, is this where we're going to fix something to? Yeah, the, is this arm. the arm. The arm right. comes off the top. So now brace. it's looking like this. Yeah. We've got an arm going out one way or the other. Yeah. Out to like here. Yeah. yeah. It goes. Just onto that or past that? No, it goes onto that. So we're making that? Yeah, and we're going to use this box section here to be the arm, and I think we're going to use these two bits to be the A. Are we really it goes wrong happy tomorrow. Strong enough? Yeah, no, blame me. So, with our teams struggling to complete their medieval masterpieces, <laughs> let's take a look at the real deal. Trebuchets have had a chequered history on the scrap heap, so I've come to Warwick Castle to see one that actually works. Our judge, Nick Glue, is going to show me around and I thought I'd dress up for the occasion. How's that then, Nick? Is that, is that suitable? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Weighing in at a whopping 22 tonnes, it takes these huge hamster wheels to winch her long arm down. Now, at an initial glance, Nick, this is very different looking machine to the thing the uh, aquarium crew are making. It, it is, um, but basically the, the, the principles are exactly the same. Uh, they look very different, but uh, uh, essentially theirs is a throwing arm with a counterweight. All they've done is reverse the whole idea, so they've built theirs generally upside down, right. for want of a better description. The other thing is they've gone for steel, obviously, being on a scrap yard, there's not yeah. many oak trees not a lot uh, around on the heap. Um, and that can go against them. With a machine built of wood, the flexibility of the wood allows the stresses to pass more safely through the machine. Whereas if you use a more rigid material, so it's just solid, yeah, like solid steel, yeah. then it could either snap right. or, or 
terminally bend. But you need really a, a ratio of about 100 to 150 to 1. Right. From your weight of your counterweight to the object you're going to throw. The aquarium cruise machine is not going to have that kind of no, weight, is it? That. I mean, the scooters range between 70 to 100 kilograms in weight, and Don's using for his counterweight just over two tons. Yeah. So, will it actually perform? <laughs> I think we're just about coming to a hold. Oh, if we want to slow, then we can uh, stop this thing right. and uh, get the fruits of our labors and go and chuck Brilliant. something. Let's try that. On the heap, and the balloonatics are steaming ahead. Right, we've got some ram mounts. Whee. Should we offer one of these rams in so we can have a look see at it? Way. Okay, it's gonna take a bit of muscle. Bloody one, two, three. It's not long before the first ram is in place, and it's quickly followed by the second, allowing Captain okay. Seymour and expert Todd time to take stock. So what we've got to do, we've got to, got to get the two springs in, okay. get the arms in. Okay and get the cable from okay. the arm onto the spring. OK. Are oh, we going to get to the test fire tonight? Because, hell, we want to intimidate next door. Uh, Psychological warfare here, Yeah, no, for sure. With a battle plan set, Kentian fingers are fixing the mounts for their huge arms, while Captain Seymour and expert Todd set about attaching the massive leaf springs. It looks pretty good. Happy? Yeah. Oh, it's not looking bad, Charlotte. That's pretty good. As yeah. long as it's flat okay. that way. Right, weld it up. Unaware of this impending psychological attack, the aquarium crew are finally attaching the arm to their counterweight. Oh, two inches, three inches, just a... Oh, hey. up, 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 up. Now we're going back now. But with one step forward, it's two back, as they begin deciding where to brace it by committee. I'm just thinking oh, on there. Get, we can get, get it there and there. That still distance got there. Of force. What do you reckon, Charlotte? I reckon... Middle of drum? Uh, yeah. At least. The it's size still, of the radius. Yeah. These yeah. constant discussions are costing them valuable time late in the game. <laughs> OK, teams, this is your one hour call. Ooh. You have one hour, no. 60 minutes of full time remaining. Thank right. you. That's no good. So, what are we going to do <laughs> for the rest of the 55 minutes? No idea. Cup of tea, oh. anybody? <laughs> But refreshments are a distant fantasy for the aquarium crew. With only minutes left, they've still got a lot to do before attaching that trebuchet arm. By contrast, the balloonatics are on the home straight, having only finer fettling left to complete. Now, the, the aquarium crew have got to work like mad for this last little bit, haven't they? Because that build is so huge. It is. It's a big build. And at first, they seem to be taking the lead, but now they seem to have dropped behind a bit, so they yeah. have to put a right bit of work in for the last ab yes. uh, to get that thing up right. Yes. So we yeah. just have to trust that all the bits that they've made fit together. Yeah, they should do. But also, it sounds like the, the balloon ticks might do a test firing tonight. Well, yeah, they've, they've been, been threatening one if yeah. they can get the machine together. And, you know, depending on how that comes about and, yeah. you know, where the machine stays together and uh, it all works well, then that, you know, could heavily swing in their favour. Yes. Could change everything. For a start, let's not stand in the <laughs> yeah. way when they do it. <laughs> yeah. To see a team achieve a test fire on Bill Day is a rare treat. I can't wait to see the machine for myself. That is amazing. Well, wow, that does Hello. look... That looks the business. That is incredible. What a monster. Yeah. Ye of little faith, eh, Rob? Well, well, you know, I, I admit I wavered a little. Is there a chance of a test fire? We're ready. Are you? You're kidding. Yeah, you're we, ready? Are, we are actually ready. Well, I mean, I really want to see this go, so I'm not going to get in the way, guys. I know you've got a few more bits to do. I'll let you get on with it, but uh, I should Great. be watching. With the balloonatics panning their preemptive strike, the aquarium crew are only now in a position to offer up that huge trebuchet arm to those massive A-frames. Right, right the, the nuts? nuts are down where's by the lab, the down by you. In the dirt. Right, in here the we dirt. go. Looking all rusty. Well, uh, that helps the threads to lock. The dirt in the thread helps it yeah. to stay on. We like a bit of that. We don't mind a bit of dirt. But at the 11th hour, a last minute measure reveals a major problem. 50 mil out. It's a mile off. I don't know what we're going to do. Is it? Yeah. With one leg significantly shorter than the other, their arm could swing unevenly, rocking the machine to bits. Can we pack? 50 mil. Oh. It's a disaster for the aquarium crew, 
And if that wasn't bad enough... Five, four, three, two, one! <laughs> well, it came out, it went along. That is good. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. They look, they look very pleased with that. That's a very good sign. <laughs> <laughs> But there's no celebration in the Aquarium Cruise Bill Bay, where their scrap heap future is literally hanging in the balance. How can you be thinking of tea? <gasps> ah. It's really very nerve-wracking. Very, very nerve-wracking. It's like lifting the Mary Rose, only this is more precious to me. <laughs> With only seconds to spare, they're going to have to hope their earlier measuring mishap can be rectified in tinkering time tomorrow. When they haven't broken it, I'll cheer. <gasps> Okay, teams, your time is up! Hey. Oh, yes, team. But if you thought that was tough... Tomorrow is the true test, when we see just how far your siege machines can sling a scooter. Well done, yes. teams! <laughs> Welcome back to Scrap Heap Challenge, where both teams are preparing to shoot scooters into a quarry using massive medieval siege engines. And the rules couldn't be simpler. Each team has three attempts to launch three identical life-size scooters as far as their machines will throw them. The longest single throw wins. But before they begin, our two teams have just one hour to fine-tune their flingers. After an excellent build, the Balloonatics have only the finer details to think about whilst the aquarium crew are now having to knuckle down to try and fix their wonky leg. Well, Nick, now we're here. For a start, the, 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 the trebuchet looked absolutely huge in the yard. It's sort of slightly dwarfed by the size of the, the quarry, isn't it? It doesn't look, it doesn't quite, look quite, as, quite as big, but it's still an impressive piece of gear. It is. Well, I will say, now seeing it in daylight, been looking at that arm, and um, it does hold some concern as to whether that arm's going to take the amount of pressure it's going right. to be under. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that they're tying the, the, the scooter to the very long bit at the end. To the tip on the end of the which arm, is, yeah. Which is going to take an enormous amount of a shock massive and amount weight, of force, yeah. 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 Right. Uh, but I think that's a problem for both teams. Uh, yes. Both of their arms, all their arms, are going to be in a lot, a lot of strain. So it's yeah. down to how well they've done those welds. Yes. Of course, the one thing we did see last night was a test firing by the Balloonatics, which I thought was pretty impressive, but super low pressure. It's it looked, it looked good, um, but what they've got to remember is last night they just shot a section of iron bar, and yeah. today they're shooting a scooter, and the, the weight and the size and the aerodynamics are going to be completely different. Yes. So. so now you, uh, you've been firmly behind the aquarium crew for the whole build. I mean, have you changed your mind now you've seen it here? Um, I've still, I still got to go with the aquarium crew, because theirs right. is a better design, but um, I, that, that arm still causes a lot of concern. Right. It's, you know, it's, it's quite a weak arm, so it's only got to do three shots, though, so if it holds yes, up. Yes, yes. Aquarium crew, get ready to shoot your scooter on the sound of the horn in three, two, one. Here we go. Oh. oh, oh no, that's a classic problem. The trigger's stuck. No. Oh. Here we go. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, is so that is perfect. That threw a scooter. That, that was the, very, very yeah. effectively. Are you happy? I'm really happy. Good, good. good. I think it was the right way to go. I think start light. They've got three turns, haven't they? Yeah. If at they least... had destroyed it with the first one, that would be so. Well, at least now they've got a, you know a score on the table. Yeah. Well. After initial trigger trouble, the aquarium cruise scooter flew straight into the quarry, showing their patched-up leg is doing the job. But will it be enough to beat the Balloonatic's pumped-up crossbow? What's it looking like, Seymour? Uh, it's just coming up straight now. About straight. The Balloonatic's are almost ready. You can feel the tension in the air and in the cable. Balloonatic's, I know there's a lot of strain in that machine. Let's fly some scooters on the sound of the horn in three, two, one. Come on, Balloonatic's. No. That, I think, is classifiable as a classic scrap heap moment. It's not worked, has it? It hasn't worked. What happened? What not enough jackage. Not enough jackage. Simply just didn't have enough oomph to get it over the edge. Yeah. It's a disappointment for the Balloonatics. Not giving their machine enough power allowed the scooter to slide off its rails, crashing into the arms of their crossbow. Next to shoot from our chalky Oki are those fish tank constructors from Weymouth. 
Okay, aquarium crew, this is the big test, the big wait, the second shot. Go on the sound of the horn in three, two, one. Go, go, go. With more weight on board, expectations are high. Oh, it does land very heavily, doesn't it? Very graceful. Not a huge increase in distance. No, no. At Lisa to Robert, Lisa to Robert, the scooter hasn't gone as far as I thought it would. No, from where we were, it looked like it went higher. The team are thinking perhaps if they make the rope on the front shorter, then more energy will transfer into the scooter and not actually flick it up, but flick it out. It's another safe shot in the bag for the aquarium crew, but they'll have to give it all they've got for their final throw. That's because the balloonatics are back, and this time, they mean business. I think it's in danger of destroying the whole machine if they can't get any more. Balloonatics seems like a pretty good time to pull that trigger. Go on the sound of the horn in three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> well, it did it. It definitely it did it. Where is it? Mm. Oh. Mm. What are you going to do to, to get a bit further, then, Todd? Crank it more. We'll give it some, and then when we're scared, we'll let go. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm going to stand quite a long way away. Finally, the Balloonatic's giant crossbow proves her worth, but they're going to have to pump those springs to the max for their last shot. Also asking the ultimate question of their machine are those fish tank builders from Weymouth, who've stuffed their machine with every bit of metal they could find. Aquarium crew, the weight is waiting at the top of that arm. This is your third and final fling. Let that scooter go on the sound of the horn in three, two, one. Go on, John. That was good. That was good. We did it. We did it. No, I mean, that's it's not quite double the distance, but it's a. No, no, but they stuck another, you know, seven or eight metres on. Yeah, that's really good. Well, How much fun was that? It looked fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, quite fun. Yeah, I've got to say, there's Great. some balloonatics over there looking a little bit worried. Mm. After all that cunning, their faces have got to. the same colour as their overalls. Yeah. <laughs> The gamble has paid off for the aquarium crew. The best shot of the day so far. It went miles. It's not moving. But it's not over yet. Just one good shot could mean victory for the balloonatics. And with all mechanical sympathy gone, they're pumping up those rams as high as they dare. Being exposed, it's going to be messy. I'm certainly going to run. Yeah, Hi, John Lee. Get ready to bang. Okay. okay. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Get ready. ready? Fire balloonatics. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> oh. Oh. It was good fun. It was nice. A brave attempt. A brave, a attempt, brave yeah. attempt. It just wasn't to be for the balloonatics as the scooter crashed into the arms of the crossbow. Their fate was sealed. Well, teams, two fantastic builds, two amazing machines, and two really, really brilliant teams. But there has to be a winner on Scrap Heap Challenge. And this week, as we all know, the winners are the fabulous Aquarium Crew! Hey! hey. <laughs> no, no, no! <laughs>